I've been young my whole life. Sounds like a strange thing to say, but at the age of 36, it kind of makes sense. I maybe didn't realize at the time, but I had a great childhood. A relatively smooth, stress-free transition into my teens, and by the time I got to adulthood, well, the world didn't seem like too tough of a place. Of course, that has everything to do with being young. Every day was a chance to have more fun, do cool stuff, and meet new people. You just don't understand worry, and drinking all the time, well, that was also the norm. You have loads of friends, you always have somewhere to go, and everything was always going to be okay. There is nothing better in this world than being young. As I just said, I'm 36, and though in a world where 50 is the new 40, 36 is still young. It's not though. Right now, I am the oldest I've ever been. Again, this is a strange thing to say, but at the age of 36, it really hits home. Your career takes over. You are always working. You have fewer places to go, less people to see, and have fewer friends to hang out with. And those are the positives. You have less hair, more worries, and alcohol leads to hangovers, always. Seriously, I think about having a drink during the week and I wake up with a hangover. The start of my workday at 4 a.m. has a lot to do with that. But why the hell am I getting up this early? You have to, it's called having a career. For the very first time in my life, I feel old and it really sucks. But that's because I suffer from occasional bouts of nostalgia. Nostalgia is a little like crack. It makes you feel good for a little while, but ultimately when the high fades, you feel even worse than you did originally. Realizing this made me realize that getting old isn't actually that bad. I mean, being young was cool and all, but looking back, it's mostly superficial crap. I mean, look at me here. I was such a dumbass with a very limited view on the world. I'm glad I've become more than that. I'm glad I got older. I would rather hang out with current me than this guy. Well, maybe this guy for like five minutes, but nothing more. I wouldn't introduce him to my girlfriend, that's for sure. But how do we fight the nostalgia cravings? Because they will come back, they're always there. Well, for starters, do not watch the movie Hot Tub Time Machine. That'll make you want to do spring break in the middle of winter and cash in your savings for strippers. There is something I'm going to test out which I feel could be the answer, and I'm going to call it a hundred days to better. Sounds a bit cliched, I know, but if your life keeps getting better, you'll never have a need to hanker for the past, right? We do dumb stuff like quitting drinking for a month, or insane 90 day gym challenges, or just, you know, buy new cars. I'm proposing something a lot more worthwhile and longer lasting. For a hundred days, just add one new thing or activity to your life that you think will make it better. It can literally be anything, just as long as it is something you think will make today better than yesterday. Because this is the reality of life, unfortunately. When you're young, life is easy. The older you get, the more you have to work at everything. I don't care who you are or what you do, you can't escape that truth. But the way to make it more manageable is by doing something small each day to improve yourself. Keep a little journal on this and let's see what happens. I'm going to do it and make some videos along the way. I enjoyed my youth to the fullest, don't get me wrong, but that was then. Now also has the potential to be amazing. You just need to apply yourself a little more. And that's what I'm going to do with 100 days to better. This week on your favorite social media sports feature, it's the Steve Smith edition. So this week, Steve had this to say, excited to play at this beautiful ground tomorrow. It's in my top three grounds in the world. I hate when guys do this. Damn you, Devereaux. Now we're gonna go into his Instagram account. Okay, there you go. So there's a nice picture of him and his team with the mountain behind at Newlands. So this is what people had to say about that. Hope you're ready for a broken arm, mate. From Kazi Brew. <laughs> Enrico has quoted Mitch Marsh at Steve Smith. Better bring some extra body pads along. Got a feeling you're going to get a few well-directed bounces, which you deserve. Can't believe you actually said it was harder than it looked on TV. Spot on, Roland. <laughs> I'm sad about your crybaby comments. As our captain, you should be above this. Do not forget, our bowlers over the years have been very aggressive. When we dish it out, we need to take the comeback on the chin. Smart, Cheryl. Yeah, spot on. If someone bumps you, remember this isn't soccer. <laughs> Hashtag crybaby. Thanks, Anthony. Do us. 
Uh, sometimes it's just best said when so few words are used. Uh, your friend is also playing Kakiso from King's Punjab. Okay, I gotta say, there was a lot of Indian comments there which I, si- I siphoned through because they just want to, I think, make love to Steve Smith. Careful someone doesn't brush up against you and cause another emotional meltdown, you wanker. Thanks, Gavin. Hope Sonny Bill Williams <laughs> turns up at the ground. I don't think that's ever going to get old for some people. Hope you recovered from your horrific experience. What a terrible shoulder injury. (laughs) Have a nice one, man. I hope no one touches your shoulder this time. It's probably still fragile after that ruthless KG attack. (laughs) Lever Kong, that's pretty good. I hope you dislocated shoulders back in its rightful place. (laughs) I love this. This is so good. Doki Pretorius put this out originally. So funny. Hi, Miss Stevie. Do you think you should be playing in the women's league? <laughs> uh, you read it so basic, it's still funny. Imran says, how is your constructive shoulder surgery? And Costa says, Suki shows his true colors. We want KG to play. Replaced by the Suk response, he really hit me hard, mommy. We all have eyes, Steve, but perhaps rather this honest Suki fear than this false bravado of last week. Just don't forget your brown underpants tomorrow, Suki. <laughs> That's it for episode eight of the Bounce Vlog and the final Bounce Vlog of what I would call season one. So I've done eight episodes and I'm gonna give it a break right now because, well, I'm really gonna get stuck into the 100 days to better thing I just told you about. Plus, it takes a lot of time to make these vlogs and I've got a bit of work coming up and I've really gotta apply myself to some other things. Next week is also gonna be the final regular edition of the Bounce Show podcast. So I'm also kinda of gonna give that a break gonna let that one run uh i will be doing special features upcoming though so the whole clip central podcast on a thursday won't be gone forever just the current kind of format of it will be will be done so no more thursday podcast but every monday to friday you can still catch me every single day on the gareth cliff show that's still in my opinion my best work my best podcast so that's every monday to friday around 6 40 south african time live otherwise catch the podcast you'll find it on my twitter feed <sighs> And yeah, that's all I've got to say for this. Thanks so much for being part of this whole vlog thing. It's been great. I've really enjoyed it. I've learned so much. And every week going on the YouTube channel, I'm going to be putting out features. So if anything, you'll get more content on the YouTube channel, not less with the vlog going away. The whole Australia SA Cricket series has given us so much content. So you'll find a lot more stuff like that going forward. That's about it. Uh, I guess just say bye for the vlog, but otherwise, subscribe to the channel please tell your friends to do the same and a lot more content coming right here on follow the bounce on the youtube channel all right bye for now